In this video, we're going to look at three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate systems. In principle, it's easy enough. We need to add a third axis that's perpendicular to the first two. Uh, however, there is a bit of a catch. To see what I mean, let's go back and look at two-dimensional coordinate systems. In two dimensions, you can always rotate two coordinate systems so they are identical. Let's take a look at these two. If I were to take this coordinate system and I want to rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees so that this y-axis is pointing in the same direction, I can do that. And now the coordinate systems are identical. And while it may take more complicated rotations, in two dimensions you can always do rotations so that the coordinate systems are exactly alike. That becomes important later. So I've changed my second coordinate system a little. So now we want to know where to add the third axis. Well, it has to be perpendicular to the first two. So for both of these, the third axis needs to be coming out or into the surface. The direction is fixed by the right-hand rule. And what the right-hand rule is in this case is you point your fingers along the positive x-axis. You flip them to point along the positive y-axis. And when you can do that, then your thumb points along z. To look at that, let's go into three dimensions. In our commitment to bring you the most advanced physics demonstration materials, I give you this three-dimensional coordinate system. So you can see there's a positive x, there's a positive y, and a positive z coming out of the table. So to see the demonstration of a right-hand rule and what I mean by that, so you point your fingers along x and flip them to be along y. See, they flip forward, they don't flip back, they flip forward. So you want to be able to flip your hands between x and y. And when you can do that, your thumb points in the direction of positive z. All right, for this first system, if I point my fingers in that direction along x, and I flip them so that they'll point along y, my thumb is going to be pointing out of the surface. So the positive z is going to point out in this case. For the second one, if I point my fingers along x and I flip them so that they point along y, my thumb will be pointing into the surface, so the positive z will be going in. And so this is how you can set up your coordinate system. You can choose positive x and positive y to be any direction you want. But once you've chosen those, the positive x direction is fixed by the right-hand rule. Let me introduce you to another piece of notation. We'll sometimes use this notation to be a vector out of the surface of what we're writing on. And we have this notation to mean into the surface of whatever we're writing on. And the way to remember this is you think about an arrow, where here this is the tip of the arrow coming out of the surface at you, and now you're looking at the feathers of the arrow going into the surface you're riding on. Let me explain a little bit of what's going on. When you establish a coordinate system in this way, it's called a right-handed coordinate system. And right-handed coordinate systems are good. If you choose the other direction, that's called a left-handed coordinate system. And that is bad. You know where that comes from, because if you do the same strategy that we just outlined, use your left hand and put your fingers along x, flip to the direction of y, your thumb will point in the direction of z for a left-handed coordinate system. And so why is one good and the other bad? These are the only two types of three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate systems. All coordinate systems that you can write down of this type can be rotated to look exactly like one of these. But no amount of rotation will turn a left-handed coordinate system into a right-handed coordinate system. And you need to choose one or the other. Now you might have asked, why did we choose right-handed coordinate systems? We didn't have to. We could have chosen left-handed ones. But the problem is we have to make a choice and have to stick with it because we will get different mathematical results depending on the type of coordinate system that we use. Only choosing right-handed coordinate systems is called a convention. We decide which one we're going to do and we stick with it. The significance being many of the equations and mathematical expressions that we have will not be valid unless you have a right-handed coordinate system. Now you could go through all the work and translate 
all of these mathematical expressions into left-handed coordinate system expressions, but that would be very tedious and could lead to enormous number of errors. So the important thing is to always use your right hand and make sure you have a right-handed three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system.